from soldiers in combat over centuries and centuries, being given a little courage perhaps from time to time, a little warmth, a little break from the norm by being given a shot of rum or whiskey or whatever alcohol was av available. And they get that usually before an attack or as in World War I going over the top and they take that shot of rum and then within a few minutes they'd be going over the top maybe with the belly a little warm and maybe a little bit more prepared to go into that fire to go into that terrible stressful or ordeal and to do the job that we asked them as a nation to do. So now what we'll do is we'll have our shots. We're gonna talk about some heroes of Canada and then we're gonna have a drink with them. We're gonna to toast them and their incredible heroism and their service and sacrifice for our great nation. Shots with soldiers. Tonight, we're gonna to talk about what's called the Can Loan Officers. Almost no Canadians know about it, but we're gonna talk about 673 incredible Canadians, all men, who in 1943 volunteered to go from the Canadian Army where they were serving in Canada largely across to the British Army as lieutenants or in occasionally as a captain and fill the vacancies in the British Army because of the incredible losses that they had taken. They had taken losses in Burma, in the Middle East, in Africa, uh, of course, and during Dunkirk and the earlier fights, and then in Singapore, in the Far East, and in Hong Kong. The British Army was desperately short, those junior officers, those lieutenants and captains to command platoons and companies, and they asked Canada for a loan of some of their officers. At that time, Canada was disbanding two of the domestic divisions that were serving in Canada, and many of those officers, many of the soldiers, in fact, desperately wanted to get into the war. More than 670 of them, 673, volunteered to go to the Can Loan program. Some of them, Lieutenant Colonels commanding battalions took a reduction in rank to Lieutenant in order to be part of the program. They congregated in Gagetown, New Brunswick in late fall of 1943 and were tutored and trained and cultured and prepared and inspired by another incredible Canadian hero, hero Brigadier General Milton Gregg, Victoria Cross. Milton Gregg had won his Victoria Cross in World War I and he was known to every single one of those officers who showed up. They sailed across the ocean and joined their British units in the various divisions. Some of them fought in Sicily, some of them fought in mainland Italy, others fought in the Middle East, others fought in Burma, and many of them went ashore on D-Day and fought throughout Northwest Europe. Out of 673 can loan officers, they had that, that group of officers had the highest number of awards for valor and bravery in the presence of the enemy. They had the highest number of casualties uh, throughout the campaign for any group in the Canadian Army. And they had the highest number of medals awarded to them for that bravery and that courage in the presence of an enemy. And they had the highest number of killed for any similar size group in our army during World War II. Out of 673 who went off to join their British units, most of them functioned as platoon commanders. Some made it through that and became company commanders and at least one of those officers became the battalion commander of the unit that he had joined as a lieutenant colonel in the Canadian Army serving in the British Army. Out of 673, 459 of them were wounded in action. Can you imagine that? Over 450 wounded in action out of 673 who volunteered to go and serve. And out of those 459 wounded in action, 129 of them died of their wounds. 129 soldiers officers, Canadians, incredible men who gave their life in service to our country in service to the British Empire. Out of that, that group of 673, 43 of them were awarded the Military Cross for bravery in the presence of the enemy. And at least one of those military crosses had a bar on it denoting a second military cross for a separate instance of valor itself. At least one of them was awarded the Croix de Guerre by France, and another one was awarded the Silver Star by the United States of America by his, for his incredible bravery while fighting in conjunction with US Army soldiers. An incredible group of 673 soldiers, 129 who laid down their lives for our country. In 2007, on the 10th of November, my wife Joyce and I were privileged and absolutely delighted to attend what was the last reunion of the Can Loan Officers Association. And what they did was after World War II, those who had survived formed an association in order to belong to it. You had to have been in that can loan program and be one of the 673 or the surviving 
uh, out of that 673. They formed an association and looking ahead to the distant future, they had a bottle of whiskey uh, donated to them by a Canadian distillery. And they built a case which was part book, part case and that fitted the bottle of whiskey. They put the bottle into it and on the other side on the covering part were pages where each of those officers signed their name. And the intent of the association was that the last two officers alive would share, would break open that bottle of whiskey and share it. And so they had the last reunion in 2010 and uh, in 2007, excuse me, on 10 November on the night before uh, Remembrance Day in Ottawa. My wife and I attended at the British High Commissioner's residence in Ottawa itself. And there were 29 of the survivors from that 673 there. Their association had been so close after the war that in fact, many of the widows of the officers who had been a part of the association showed up by themselves because they felt so much a part of this actually incredible family. During the night, they made the decision that it was stupid. It was dumber than dirt, I think was the comment that was used to save that bottle of whiskey for the last two remaining survivors. Because by then, one or both probably would be in a coma or in palliative care or in an hospice and they would not be able to do justice to that bottle of whiskey. So the decision was made that night. They were gonna open that bottle of whiskey and they were gonna drink it there. They got the bottle of whiskey out of the box, got it onto the table. The senior officer who had retired as a three-star general, as a Lieutenant General got up and everybody jumped up and, and it was incredible to watch and filled your heart with pride because here were these men all in their nineties now, all older, infirm, difficult to move, acting almost like little boys as they wanted to line up and be first in line to get their shot of that bottle of whiskey, which they had had for so long. And the senior officer who got tired of them moving around said, adjutant, sort them out. And the adjutant who was 97 years old, struggled to his feet and said, men, sort yourselves out. So they calmed down, formed a line in front of that whiskey bottle and went through and the adjutant with the senior officer poured each of them a little shot. There were two small shots left over. I had one and the British Eye Commissioner had the other. And with those 29 and two shots, we all toasted the incredible Canadians, those awesome heroes, those warriors extraordinaire, those men, those officers of the Can Loan Association and thank them for their service to our great nation. That was their last reunion. 29 of them were left. They went their separate ways, undoubtedly, Many of the individuals saw each other, but that was the last time that they came back together again as a group. What an incredible group of Canadian heroes. Canadians know nothing about them, which is why we wanted to tell their story tonight. 673 of them from right across this great country. Out of 673, 129 made that ultimate sacrifice on our behalf. So tonight, when we do a toast, we're gonna to do it to the men, the incredible Canadians, those awesome heroes, the officers, and all those who were part of the Can Loan Association and say, thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice to us. God bless you. To the Can Loan officers, ladies and gentlemen. And Bruce, I know that there was a small request that we might have some questions and answers. So I stand by for a few moments. If we do have any questions, Maybe somebody else can provide the answers. And if not, I will. So uh, why is their story not known? I've never uh, heard this story. Gordon Anderson, you are a producer and a director extraordinaire. There's a movie right there. There's a movie right there, the Can Loan Officers. If this were the United States of America or almost any other nation, we would have had a Hollywood movie telling this incredible story and, and extolling the, this heroism and service and sacrifice and the incredible people that we have in our history that built this great nation, to all Canadians, we don't. Shame on us. Or the Americans would tell the story, but they'd make them American, not Canadian. And, and God bless them for being able to do that, because that's how Hollywood works. But at least the story would be told. And, yeah. and that's what we've not done. We've not told our story. And they, what you're talking about is why we're doing those shots with a soldier or tonight shots with soldiers. Nobody knows this story. Nobody's heard it. The number of people who... If you said can loan officers, uh, there would just be a blank look on you. And, and the opportunity that Joyce and I had to meet with those few remaining, the few survivors 
and to talk with them and then to, to I, I don't know, wrap that package for history by having that last shot with them was absolutely incredible. And, and one of the highlights of my life, I got to say. Sir, I'm curious, you said that they were loaned from kind of all over to um, go fill spots uh, for like lieutenant and captain positions and some of them dropping rank. Where do you know where they came from as far as like trades and battalions and everything? I'm uh, yes, but now I, I can't tip that right off the end of my tongue right now. But if you go into the can loan program and just Google it and then start the military research and, and you're not going to find it all online unless you're going to reading some of the military history. What, what, where they came from were two home defense divisions. Early in the war, as Canada was preparing the army to both uh, fight and win an offensive fight against Nazi Germany as part of the Great Alliance, we also were preparing the army to defend Canada because at that point we weren't sure that the Nazi Germany wasn't going to be reaching as far as North America. So we had two home divisions by 1943. It was clear and obvious uh, that the German army was on the strategic retreat everywhere, that Germany was on the strategic defensive and they were no longer posing any kind of even imaginable threat to Canada on the land. So those divisions were disbanded. The officers and the soldiers in those divisions had come from across the land. Many of them had been brought in because of conscription or, or were, were coming into it because of that. But they were in those divisions and when the divisions were disbanded, uh, these were in particular, the Can Loan officers were the ones who, who wanted to get into the war. They wanted to play their part. Uh, they wanted to have a role in what was the greatest experience of their generation. And like I say, there was at least one Lieutenant Colonel who took a reduction in rank to Lieutenant to go and be a part of the Can Loan program, became a platoon commander uh, in the British Army, as a matter of fact, so commanding 30, 35 soldiers, as opposed to his battalion of about 700. So incredible group, very diverse from right across the nation. Sir, we have a, a question on our Facebook Live. Is this something being taught through military history courses at RMC? Uh, I don't believe it is, but I, I have not taken military history courses specifically out of RMC. I don't believe it's taught. It might be referred to or alluded to. And, and I'd like somebody to come back and correct me and, and tell me that I'm wrong, that it is being taught. I would be delighted to say I was wrong because I would be happy to hear that it is taught. I don't believe so. Not enough people know about it or have heard about it. Um, another question is, is there a uh, monument to these men? Uh, you know something, there is a monument to these men that's in Ottawa. And I'm trying to recall exactly where it is. I have it's it on the Rideau River or the canal there uh, on the river, the Ottawa River. And it was de dedicated early 2000s, if I recall. Uh, and, and so, yes, there is a monument. And I'm sorry, I should know that there is a monument to the Canlone officers. I, I have it here, sir. It's, it's in Stanley Park. There you go, Stanley Park. So right up behind the Parliament buildings in the Chateau Laurier. Okay, is there any other questions for the general? Okay. Is there a similar program in place today where there's a, an officer exchange program or, or something of the sorts? Yeah, the Canadian Forces has had exchange programs ever since really we built, well, can loan program being a one-way exchange, if you will. But yes, since the end of World War II and particularly since the, the forming of NATO, in, in the very early 50s, Canada has participated with like nations, our friends and allies, the United Kingdom, uh, the United States of America, certainly France, uh, and then outside of that alliance, Australia and New Zealand at certain points of time with exchange programs between combat units, between uh, the navies uh, or amongst the navies and also amongst the air forces. So yes, you know, uh, ju just as one example, not an exchange program, but the NORAD program, which brings Canada and the US together in the air defense of North America. On 9-11, the guy running the operations was a Canadian Brigadier General, uh, you know, and, and who had to respond to all that was occurring at the time, working seamlessly with his US counterparts. Uh, Canadian uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen and air women have served in Gulf Wars with American units. We've served in Bosnia and places like that with American units and, and Americans, British, uh, and again, French served with us uh, when I arrived in Kabul in 2003, summer of, and uh, was looking at Camp Julian and where it was going to be built on the western part of Kabul. Uh, I met the engineer who was building that camp. He was a British major on exchange with the Canadian Army and four, four engineer regiment engaged down to Brunswick. And hey, 
he was doing the job that one of our majors would do or one of our engineer officers and leaders would do. He was building Camp Julian for our next rotation into Afghanistan itself. He, he actually did that job, did it wonderfully, went back to Gagetown once his tour was over, finished off his exchange posting, went back to the British Army, spent, I think, 18 months more in uniform, got his 20 years of service for his pension, and came back to Canada and joined the Canadian Army. So we have a vibrant program uh, right across our closest friends and allies. I'll say, General, if I can, um, every junior British officer is exposed to the Canon story at in Warminster. As they kind of work their way through the junior leadership programs there, they are exposed to those stories. And, and well done, the British. Well done, the British Army. And woe on us for not doing likewise uh, in our Army, because this is such an incredible piece of our history. And then, like I say, for the third or fourth time, almost nobody in our great nation knows about it. I have one more question, if I may. Go right ahead, please. Uh, since 2007, you said that uh, the last reunion, there's about 29 um, members left. Uh, do we know how many are still around and if they still do any sort of like day of recognition every every year or anything? So I don't know for sure, but given that in you know 2007, they were all just slightly older when they went as those officers, as those junior officers, lieutenant and captains, because they had served for a period of time in Canada. Right. And, and so they were all like the youngest were uh, at that time, I think were 89 or 90 years old. So that was 13 years ago. Uh, I, I'm doubting very much that any of them are still alive. Uh, certainly if they are, uh, they wouldn't be out moving around to do any kind of activity. Well, sir, there's no more questions on Facebook Live. I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, Wonderful. This episode. We do want to encourage everyone to like and share uh, Valor <laughs> in the Presence of the Enemy, our, our group, and our other social media on Instagram and Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. And uh, yeah, thanks again, General. And we will keep you updated for the next episode. Hey, Bruce, keep us live here now on Facebook. And, and just let me say, yeah, folks, uh, when you read this, like it, share it, valor in the presence of the enemy, do it on Facebook, do it on Instagram, do it on Twitter. Uh, I'll put it on LinkedIn for sure. Like it and share it, please. And, and let's tell this story far and wide. And let's be proud of those 673 Canadians who served us so incredibly well. And let's make sure they're not forgotten. And let's make sure we build on the inspiration that they gave us because they helped build this great nation when those leaders came home. They, first they protected it. And then they came home and helped us build it and be inspired by them and the hardships that they went through and realize that this hardship that we're in now, the pandemic that we are in now, we can get through that too. And, you know, they were asked to fight in Burma and the Middle East and uh, in the muddy, frozen, brutal hills of Italy and on Normandy Beach in northwestern Europe. And they did that under the most incredible, frightening, stressful circumstances and succeeded. And they did that over several years of war. And if they can do that, then we can wear our face mask. We can wash our hands frequently. We can stay away from everybody and stay at least six feet away. We can avoid touching our face and we can stay home unless we absolutely need to go out and avoid getting close to people. And if we do that, and then if you get worried about COVID-19, go get yourself tested. And while we're doing those things in a disciplined manner, because we know we can with the example of those can loan officers. We'll grow that vaccine right up the middle throughout 2021. And with all three things, we'll win the war against COVID-19 and get back to something that's as normal as we can remember in the societies that we love and doing the things that we want to do. Use the discipline, use the inspiration that those can loan officers, those incredible Canadians provide us by their example and let's be successful in this war against COVID-19 also. Thank you.